I don't know what's going on with Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, but they have just been feeding us information left and right. So ironically, I'm just waking up, but I went on Twitter and I saw that Bandai Namco tweeted out a link to their website concerning the Dragon Ball Sparking Zero beginner's guide. So I think this is gonna be a really cool thing to go over for those of you guys who may not know much about the Tenkaichi series. So we're gonna go through the entire article to break down all the new info that they have for us. So we have Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, the beginner's guide. Whether you are a new player or just a fan of Dragon Ball games, get to know the basics of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero in our starter guide. So we have the summary here. We have one HUD, HP and key gauge and skill count, two, the controls, and three, understanding battles, how to read stats and customization. So starting off with the HUD, the HUD of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero keeps the same essence of the Budokai Tenkaichi series, giving a comprehensive overview of each state during a fight. So we've seen the HUD, we've broken down the HUD multiple times already, but for those guys who don't know, this is a good look at the HUD. We have the key gauge, which is the yellow bar, the HP gauge, which is the green bar, the timer, which is in the top middle, the HP bar, which are the three green bars that you see right next to the HP gauge, the transformation icon, which is the blue circle with an arrow pointing up, the skill count, which is the number, or in this case, what it's pointing to, the number two, and the hit count, which obviously determines how many hits you've landed on your opponent, as well as the amount of damage that you've landed as well. HP and key gauge. HP gauge. The bar shows the character's current HP level and decreases when you or your opponent take damage. Once it hits zero, the character is defeated. Every HP bar has a different color, going from blue to orange, and the amount of remaining HP bars is indicated in the left corner. Key Gauge Like in the original anime, key is the power that can be used to perform super attacks and other movements. To increase the key gauge, you can either charge it yourself or it will slightly charge by itself whenever you hit your opponent with hand-to-hand -hand combos. Once your key gauge is maxed out, you can start filling up your sparking gauge to enter a special state known as sparking mode. It requires at least one skill gauge to enter the mode. It decreases as you dash or use key blasts and blast attacks in game super attacks. Once the key bar becomes red, you will not be able to move until it returns back to normal. So the HP gauge, very self-explanatory just don't die and the key gauge much like how it functioned in the older tenkaichi games it's useful for a variety of things such as movement options super attacks ultimate attacks things of the sort so when it comes down to your key gauge make sure that you manage it well and just another reminder remember that when you fully charge your key in the older games it was called high tension it's not called that anymore it's called sparking mode but it functions the exact same way now we have the skill count. The skill count is used when you perform various moves such as transformation, fusion, and skills like super perception or revenge counter. It charges over time as every time the blue bar is full, it adds one charge to the count. Transformation icon. This displays the amount of available transformations for the character. Hit count. Displays the number of blows delivered and the amount of damage dealt or received. Timer. The, time, or the countdown begins when the fight starts. Once it reaches zero, the fight comes to an end. So um, not gonna worry about the timer because it's self-explanatory. Same for hit count. And the transformation icon we've already seen in action. Again, it shows your available transformations and whatnot. But the skill count, it pretty much functions the exact same way as Blast Stocks did in the older Tenkaichi games. So when you have a skill count available, you're able to perform certain things. Two of the most important features that you're going to be using in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, or at least in my opinion, will be the Super Perception and the Revenge Counter. They're very, very useful tools to being able to uh, get out of combos or just to not take damage in general. So again, you want to make sure that your skill count management is also good. And now we have the controls, and I'm really glad that they have a picture with this. But anyway, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero proposes two different types of controls. Standard, the recommended controls for the game. Classic, enables you to enjoy similar controls to those of the previous Budokai Tenkaichi games. So again, we've already seen the controls before, but we actually get to see it in like the PlayStation layout now. But 
Uh, again, the controls standard is what they always rock with when it comes down to them showcasing anything. But if you do want to have a more traditional experience, then you can use the classic controls that are a lot more akin to how the older Tenkaichi games were. Anyway, moving on. This change in controls will also affect the QTE sequences controls. So uh, putting that into perspective, we got a few bits of information a few days ago concerning the training mode. And we saw like the button for like uh, the sequences on how to execute certain combos and moves and whatnot. All of those controls, or at least for that button layout, were the standard controls. And we know that for sure because when we saw perception, it was, I believe it was a PlayStation controls, it was set to circle. And I also said in my video that for Xbox, it would be set to B. But if you change to the classic controls, the layout for how to execute perception is completely different. But just wanted to clarify on that. Now we get this. I, I'm just, I'm so happy about this, man. So um, this is the QTE sequences that they were talking about that you would actually experience in battle where with standard controls and what I experienced when I played the demo, you mash the X button, right? When it comes down to clashes and whatnot. But for classic controls, you rotate the control stick, which is gonna be so amazing because personally speaking, I can't mash buttons worth my life, but when it comes down to the control stick, I can rotate the control stick fairly quickly. So me personally, I'm gonna be playing with classic controls, but of course there's just a control scheme for everyone. So if you're used to the older control scheme, we can play with classic. And if you're new to the series or you don't really care for the classic uh, control scheme, you can play with standard. For this article and all subsequent articles, we will refer to standard controls as these are the default settings for the game, which makes complete sense. Now, standard controls. Guard, hold R1, RB to guard all attacks. It can be oriented with low guard, down plus R1 and RB, or, or RB, or high guard, up plus R1 or RB. So again, much like how it was in the older games, you can just guard at a regular, just, you know, level, or you can guard high, or you can guard low. Step short dash, pressing X or A enables you to move quickly in the air or on the ground. Now, remember, in the older Tenkaichi games, there was a dedicated dash button, ironically also on the X button. But remember, the producer of the game said that the movement speed, the regular movement speed of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is as fast as dashing was in Tenkaichi 3. So it makes sense that there's not a dedicated dash button, except for, you know, the step in and uh, short dash as well. So you can quickly like uh, enter your opponent's range but you can't like just freely dash like how you did in the previous game. Now we have ascend and jump. You can jump or fly in the air by pressing L1 or LB. Descend, you can crouch down or return to the ground by pressing L2, LT. Very self-explanatory. Smash attack can be used for close combos. Hold square to perform a smash attack. And uh, also if you time it well, right? I'm assuming when Gohan starts, uh, like, uh, I think it was like that burst of light that happened. Uh, you would vanish towards the opponent. It's still in the game. So you just gotta be able to time it properly. But when you land a smash attack, you send your opponent flying. Key blast, throw a key blast, hold triangle or Y to throw a smash key blast. So if you mash the triangle button, I'm more than likely gonna be referring to PlayStation terms. When you spam the triangle button, you will just shoot out key blast. But if you hold it, then you'll perform a much stronger one. And then we have Rush Chain, enables to deliver long combos by pressing square or X once to four times, and then pressing triangle or Y. The footage shown demonstrates the move Flying Kick, which is activated by pressing square or Y after a single square or X. Actions may differ from each character. So again, it's like your extensions from the older games, makes complete sense. Uh, I believe it's like, uh, what, Flying Kick, uh heavy smash uh i think some people have like uh the ki -I move like i don't remember the specific names again i just woke up but again your extensions from Tenkaichi 3 they're in this game all right so now we have key charge you can charge your key bar by pressing r2 lt to strike key blast and super attacks so uh makes complete sense um i think they worded it kind of weird here but um, pretty much it's saying when you hold the charge button, 
uh, you charge your key, obviously your gauge uh, can be able to fill or uh, be able to be filled all the way up to its sparking state. You need a skill count, at least one to reach sparking. But uh, not only that, when you hold your key charge button, your skill list will display. And from that, you can use your blast one moves, your blast two moves or your ultimate blast. And now three, understanding battles. With its stunning and extremely varied roster, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero offers multiple ways to enjoy battles. Given the many customization options, stats, metrics, and more, let's take a look at the various possibilities the game hat or the game offers for an amazing player experience. With the game's large roster, each character comes with their own dedicated stats. So we have how to read stats. Each character has their own stats tree that can be influenced by customization transformation or current state form fusion it displays the following metrics which we you know see right here um we have special attack this increases the strength of blast and ultimate blast hp increasing this stat gives a higher number of hp combo this increases the damage dealt by combos key high key stats allow the character to perform stronger key blasts and or charge their key faster five attack this stat increases the power of smash and hand-to-hand -hand attacks so we have the indicator right here and for whichever character this is uh they specialize in attacking their secondary stats will be special attack their tertiary stats will be hp and combo and their weakest stat would be their key so maybe this is a character that is i, I was thinking uh like broly but no because i'm pretty sure broly has like a lot of health but yeah, just this character is going to be able to hit hard in general and combo relatively well while also having decent HP, but their key management is not going to be good. So you'd want to be careful with this character, whoever it is, but um, all in all though, still pretty cool. And then we have customization. This is really cool. In Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, you will be able to customize every character in the game to make them fit with your taste and play style. So we see this uh, this image of Goku, right? And his outfits, right? And then we have the details for it. Outfits, you can change the character's outfit based on your unlocked costumes. Note that this change is only cosmetic and does not have an impact on the character's stats, but can sometimes change the moveset when equipped. That is extremely important to talk about because it also makes me reconsider a particular character and how they function. So. Uh, before I actually break down whatever or whichever character that is, um, for this image, we see Goku. It's clearly Goku Super, and we have him with uh, his gi, right? His normal gi in the first outfit. The second outfit is the gi, but it's destroyed. The third outfit is the gi, but it's partially destroyed. The fourth outfit is the, like, uh, the Wii symbol outfit, and the fifth one is another variation of the gi. But it's really cool knowing that, one, we can swap outfits still, and two they actually can potentially change your moveset, which brings me to what I wanted to talk about. And that is when it comes down to the likes of Android 17 Super, I originally said that the character wouldn't make any sense to have the Dragon Ball Z outfit because Android 17 from Dragon Ball Super and Android 17 from Dragon Ball Z fight differently. But now that we understand that your outfits could change your moves, then it makes sense that he could have a Z outfit and have his, you know, Z moves. It makes complete sense. And I believe there was a video that uh, released in recent time where we saw Saiyan Saga Goku with a different outfit. And instead of Spirit Bomb, he had Super Kamehameha. So we know for sure that your outfits will change up your moves. Probably not all of them or maybe all of them. Who knows? But they can and will change your moves depending on what outfit you use and then we have accessories you can choose uh you can choose to equip some specific characters with their anime accessories to reproduce their famous moves or partially change their look halo scooter uh i'm pretty sure they meant scouter and aura oh that's really cool okay um but we do know that accessories are a thing in this game a uh, prime example is if you pre-order Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, I believe you get Goku with the Power Pole or just the Power Pole accessory to add onto Goku. So there's that. But I think what would be cool is 
if you have the power pole, but it's not just an accessory. Like his damage and whatnot would still be the same, but he actually uses the power pole to fight. I think that'd be really cool. Type. This defines the additional characteristics, abilities, based on the character type you selected. Ability items. You can enhance characters' abilities, speed, strength, HP through capsules, customizations. Customize all your favorite characters to make your look even more unique during online battles. Uh, I'm actually really curious about the ability items because that sounds, uh, it, it sounds similar to like uh, the Pataras in the Tenkaichi series, but also um, to how customization worked in Raging Blast 1 and 2, where you could add certain things onto your characters and it would boost their stats, right? So for uh, whichever character was, uh, you know, this is based off of, again, you see that their key is lacking severely, but you add those um, capsules onto the character and you can raise their key, right? So that way their stats can be even more balanced or you want them to focus a certain way, whatever the case may be. So you could use those ability items to boost that character. And I think, yeah, that seems to be the end of the article. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is developed by Spock Chunsoft for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. Stay tuned for more updates as we eagerly await the release of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. That was actually a lot of new and solid information we got for this game, especially the customization aspect. I'm really, really glad that they showed us this because again, I think that'll put the notion of a character can't be this way because it's a different iteration of this character. I think that can kind of put that to rest to an extent, right? Because we have seen that there are different variations of characters, but they have also consolidated that. And I think Android 17 is going to be one of those characters that get consolidated. But still, all in all, though, this is really cool and it has me even more excited for the game. But I do want to know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. But with that being said, I'm Adakuba, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.